Well, I'm Brian Lenskis from the Low Carb MD podcast, and I have Lisa Cook here with me. She has a story that you have to hear. It's it's unbelievable. We're at Low Carb Denver with Low Carb Down Under. We appreciate what they're doing here. And Lisa, tell us your story. Well, um, I'm probably pretty typical of most Americans that are overweight. Um, by the time I was 25, I weighed 280 pounds. So, and a lot of the reasons, I started out from birth eight pounds, 10 ounces, two weeks overdue, and I never lost it from that time. So I was a chubby kid, and I think what I really realized that I was probably obese and heavy is in junior high when they weighed everybody in front of people, and in junior high, in eighth grade, I weighed 150 pounds, and I was a size 16. And from that time, I just kept gaining weight. I got married really young at 19 and had three children right off the bat and never lost the weight. And after my third child, um, I had a uterine rupture and I lost him. And the men mental sadness drove me to eat a lot more. And I got pregnant again and lost that baby. And by that time, I was up to 280 pounds. And I started searching for a solution because I was desperate. I wanted to be really, I wanted to be thin and happy. And I thought that was going to be it. So I went to my doctor and he put me on Fen Fen and it made me really sick. So I didn't want to take it anymore. And he told me that he could wire my mouth shut and I didn't like that idea at all. So I just kept doing Jenny Craig. Weight Watchers, anything I could. I bought the sweating to the oldies. I did that at home for a while and it just didn't work. And so in 1999, um, I found a doctor who would do the gastric bypass on me. And I had the ruin Y, which is they go in and they take anywhere from five feet to seven feet of your small intestine and they make your stomach to be about a quarter cup and so that's what I did. I lost weight, 140 pounds in like nine months. I went really quick. And then um, I was good. I thought I was living the life, right? And then probably 10 years after I had the gastric bypass, um, I went to my dentist because I was noticing holes in my teeth. And I had to have all my teeth capped because I didn't know at the time, and they really didn't tell us back then in 1999 that when you have a gastric bypass, it changes the acidity in your mouth. And so it was like I was sucking on lemons all the time. Yeah. And I lost, and I'm still, I have a few teeth left, but I'm in the process of losing those also. So I kind of started thinking about this. If it's doing it to my teeth, what is it doing to the rest of my body? And so I started going online trying to find answers to those questions. And at that time, I started having some ferritin problems. And I wasn't feeling good, so I went into my doctor and my ferritin was at a three. Wow. And she looked at me and she's like, I don't know how you're doing it. You should be like in bed in the hospital. But I was doing everything because I didn't know anything different. And so from that time on, I started having some blood transfusions and then I would have iron infusions every three months and that's expensive we we are um, we are self-employed so our insurance doesn't care cover those kind of things very well yeah so you know getting back growing up did you have other siblings that were I have over? seven other siblings do they have weight issues also um, my youngest brother does yeah so but it's not the norm no, it's not the norm my parents are pretty average. Um, my dad does have diabetes and heart problems and so I think some of my problems with weight was that we were the typical Americans, right? My mom cooked all home meals. We never went out to eat but it was homemade breads. It was, you know, desserts all the time um, and I, being six of eight kids, would come home and eat a couple lo of bread, roll it up, right? So it was kind of like in a sea of seven kids, you sometimes felt lonely. Yeah, sure. So you would, I would eat. My brothers were very athletic, and I was not. 
And so that kind of disconnect with my siblings and that, I would just eat to feel happy. And then as I started getting overweight and I didn't have a lot of friends because I was kind of shy, I would go, I went and volunteered at the school cafeteria just so I could have the extras after school after lunch yeah, and that's a common thing Tro and I talk about that a lot on the podcast because a lot of us that's you know you're stressed you eat you celebrate you eat everything's your everything eating. is centered around food yeah and everything becomes that so you have a hard day and, and w w when you're obese it's, it's so hard you know and you're looking for a solution obviously you were trying everything I was trying and that's why we look at that and say well gosh I mean you know what at what point you say okay so because a lot of people think that getting a bypass or, or bariatric surgery is cheating the system meaning like it's so easy you just do this and then you're gonna be skinny and they um, don't understand the implications of what comes with that. I've heard that all the time. Mm -hmm. So everybody who is not on my side of weight loss, right, says, oh, you took the easy way out. Yes. Surgery is, and for 50% of the time, I think that was what I was thinking at the time, because all I wanted to do is get out of the pain of being overweight. And so it was at that time an easy way to get out of it. But after, it's not easy from the time you go under to the time you come out, it's not easy. And you want to eat, but you can't eat. There are many times where I was throwing up because I ate too much and it was miserable. And from that time I thought, what did I do, yeah. right? Um, and I had it in October, so I had all of the holidays coming up, which was really mentally hard. It's hard to have a gastric bypass, it's not easy. So after I had the gastric bypass, bypass and I lost 140 pounds that this this uh, how do you say it? the hard part kind of went away because now here I am but the hard part comes in when you don't change your eating habits yeah, that's critical that is absolutely critical right because you know? we're not prepared we send people in no. think okay we do surgery then you go on and it's like a knee replacement it's not a knee replacement no. it's totally different yeah and you have to change if it's going to be successful you have to change and a lot of people especially when I had it um, you went home with a sheet that gave you a few guidelines, but it wasn't, they didn't really tell you, oh, they said stay away from sweets and stay away from um, carbonated beverages. So mm -hmm. I yeah. did that for two years. I was really good with it until you start, and dumping is a big thing, mm -hmm. right? So if you eat too much fat and sugar in one time you dump, which is miserable, mm -hmm. that's another reason why it's not an easy way out. And so, but once you start past two, three years and you have that little teaspoon of ice cream and you're like, oh, it didn't do that this time. I'm gonna do it the next time. And then you fall back into your yes. same patterns again. And sometimes you can eat something and it doesn't affect you, but then the next time you eat it, it does. Yeah. And you fall into this pattern and a lot of it's emotional eating. A lot of it is this, I can't go out and enjoy something with my family because they're all eating things I can't have. But then you push yourself so you can. And a lot of, I think 50% of gastric bypass patients gain their weight back. I was really good at not eating the sugar and then staying away from carbonation. So I didn't gain my weight back. Mm -hmm. I did go back up within the last two years up to 170. But when I found keto and low carb, I decided to, when I was finding what was going on with my body, I knew there had to be something. If my teeth were dissolving and falling apart, something, everything else probably was because you have malabsorption, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. And so you don't absorb, and I started really going into what I actually had done to my body. Yeah, and it, it scared me. And plus, if you're trying to do a low fat diet, you're missing out on, on the fat soluble vitamins and things like that that you, people don't talk about. That, but it's critical. That's where I went to biohacking. I went and said, okay, if, if I'm not eating fat because I don't have a gallbladder anymore because they took that out with the gastric bypass, I'm not absorbing any of these fat soluble vitamins. There's no way I can do it. So I started in implementing on my own some ox bile to help me do that and absorb. And then I started like, my doctors never told me that I probably should be taking K2. They never told me that I should be taking, you know, they say take your vitamins and you'll be okay. Well, yeah. I don't even absorb exactly. anything anymore. So taking those vitamins doesn't do anything for my body. Yeah, and, and you know, and the other thing I, I think is grossly, um, uh, not talked about 
is the emotional aspects after a gastric bypass or, or uh, bariatric surgery. Rob Zybis, who's a friend of mine, says, I'm killing your best friend this day, right? Because that's your coping mechanism. So, you know, I was shocked. I, as a doc practicing for 15 years at that time, I had never heard anyone say that depression rates go through the roof, suicide rate goes up through the roof, depression, anxiety, stress, smoking, every addiction we know, pornography alcoholism. even, alcoholism, all these things because you can't have that cookie anymore that you want or that donut or whatever. Right. Now your life changes. And, right. and I think we're doing patients a disservice by not saying, hey, look, you're gonna have these things, right? Yeah. And how do you deal with that? When I had it in 1999, I didn't have any psychological evaluation at all. No help in that situation at all. I didn't know about wow. these things until I, and I don't drink, so I didn't have those alcoholic problems. But when you do have a gastric bypass, your stomach is so small that you can get drunk on one drink. And so there's a lot of alcoholism in gastric bypass patients. Um, and the mental thing is huge. I was a fat girl walking around in a thin body for many years until I tried to figure out uh, how to break this cycle. Yeah, that's absolutely, that is a huge topic. As a matter of fact, Tro Kalasian, my partner on the podcast, was 350 pounds cut down to normal weight. He's 32 inch waist running at the treadmill and these two guys, and that's why I picked him as my co-host right. because two guys were running behind him on the treadmill and they said, look at that fat guy. Why is he doing that? He's wasting his time. And he thought they were talking about him still, even though his body's totally different because absolutely. he identifies with that too. And I think all of us who struggle with weight, we, we, we realize like, we're not where we want to be, you know? The other day I was at a makeup counter and the girl said to me, you are so beautiful. And I just looked at her like, you're talking to me? Yeah. Because I still don't see myself beautiful. It's taken years to think I was that fat girl and I'm still that fat girl yeah, because that's... you don't address. And I have found through the 20 years of this that mind over body, and I know there's a lot of people who preach body over mind, but I think you have to work with the both. So when I found keto and low carb, I finally found something that would work for me, help me think clearer because a lot of times I'm going in that carb days, right? Yeah, yeah. Even as a gastric bypass, if I can eat it, I'm just eating a smaller amount. So I'd have the pizza, Yeah. you'd have all of the carbs, right? And you're filling up with crappy food, you're not filling up with the good food, so you're getting no nutrients whatsoever. Your brain can't think, you can't function, you're fatigued all the time. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing that was a surprise to me doing low carb and ketogenic diet for people is the mood, depression, anxiety, stress. Because if you're a stress eater, we get your stress better, guess what? It helps with that. So when yeah. people say calories in, calories out, like in your case, obviously you try that, obviously you do it. So it's, it's the same thing as I, I kind of tease back a little bit and say like golf, all you do is hit the ball in the cup. Right. That's all you got to do. Why right. is it so hard? It's easy. No, yeah. well, you got to do it. Right. And it's the same thing. It's easier said than done. And when you struggle with food, and, and, and you know, and, and you're volunteering in a cafeteria just so you can get extra food because that's your your comfort. Right. Right. And so when you can't do that anymore, now you're having the other problems that come with it. It's a huge sacrifice to be where you are now. Yeah, it yeah. is. And there is. It's not an easy way out, but there are better ways out of obesity. Right. And that's what I have found with low carb. If I had found this. 20 years ago, I think I would not have done the gastric bypass. And it's hard for me to say that. People ask me all the time, would you have done the gastric bypass? And I have to be honest with myself. Was I in the mental capacity at that time to actually make a low carb lifestyle? Yeah, in especially 1999? Without, and especially without support. When your doctor says, oh, diet doesn't work, you, you know, you're wasting your time because that, that's right. what we face with diabetes. The doctors say, well, diet doesn't make a difference. You're right. The standard diet you're giving, the food pyramid diet does not work. No. But we're seeing so much clinical success. We're seeing right. people's depression, anxiety, stress, and they're like, oh, I don't have to eat all the time. Right. Because all of us have been told, eat, eat less, right? Eat, le eat small I meals throughout the day and you do all this stuff and you're starving all the time and miserable. And we've seen it with these liquid diets where someone lose 100 pounds, they gain back 110 Absolutely. in six months. Mm -hmm. And it's a total disaster. And it, it's frustrating sitting on this side of it as a doc, you see the devastation that brings. Oh. And to hear your story and what you're still, how many years dealing ago was your surgery? 20. Yeah, 20 years you're dealing with this. Yes. I mean, that's a huge deal. My family now is, I had the gastric bypass so I could raise my young kids and be with my kids. Now I'm wondering if I'm even gonna be around when my grandkids, because I don't know what it's doing to me in my body. If it's taking calcium from my teeth, which is a probability, um, if it's taking all the nutrients from my muscles and stuff, what is it doing inside of me? We don't know because there had never been a mass study of gastric bypass before they started doing the surgery. 
most, most surgeries and drugs have been tested well before they start doing it. And they didn't do that with gastric bypass. So I'm in a field of unknowns. And I feel like the best thing for me is to do is eat real food, do the best that I can so that maybe I will be there for my grandkids. And that's a real problem. I have, I struggle with that. I want to be there with my kids. Yeah, so what's happened since changing your diet to more of a low carb type um, diet? What, what have you experienced, what have you seen that's palpable? That you, you can say my mood's better, my energy's better, your focus, what, what things would you say are improving? My ferritin levels have gone up and I'm able to keep them steady. So going from a ferritin level of three to for the last five years it was 15 to 16 so it was always on the verge and now as of two weeks ago my ferritin is 55. Wow. And I've gone to from low carb to most keto to almost ketovore. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that if I'm going to eat something it's going to be nutrient dense. So I went to the red meat because it has iron, which I need all the time. And I've been doing, you know, like the um, seafood, um, rich in omega-3s, trying to get those up. So the more I can do, the better my labs are coming back and I'm getting, I, my blood pressure is 110 over 60. I sleep better at night. Um, I have energy to keep up, go water skiing with my kids except I don't do the water skating, they think I'm crazy, but <laughs> I like to spend time. I wanna be there for yeah. my family for the long run. And I know that low carb and keto will, will help those. I have a, my brother is kind of overweight and I want him to have the same longevity, you know, cause there is heart attack disease in my family. Yeah, and I think that's important. I mean, we're looking at health, right? It, the weight is, like I tell people now, it's a side effect. Metabolic health, you get that right and things start following in the right, right, right Absolutely. direction. So for you, it's really critical, you know, yeah. to get your, you be, have nutrient dense, because you eat garbage food and you're eating well, I Pop Tarts was. all day. And you know what I mean? That what I'm saying is even if you're eating smaller amounts, you're eating garbage and your body's for starving. For 15 years, yeah. I ate that way. Yeah. Because I craved still the carbs, right? So I and would sit down. the social aspect of that Absolutely. with your family and friends. You, want to be, you don't want to be different than everyone you else. You sit down in the meal, and by the time I eat a fourth of my potato or something, I have no room for the meat. I'm already full. So I would fill up on a muffin or something and never have enough room to eat that other stuff. So you yeah. don't get nutrients. And, it, and the saying is, you are what you eat. It's you are what you absorb. That's true. And gastric yeah, yeah, bypasses exactly right. don't, we do not absorb. Yeah, and that's a, that's a critical point because a lot of times they're talking about different sources of protein and when you realize some of those proteins you take and they don't absorb, right? you're not really getting the benefit of that. You know? So in your case, you kind of, it's funny as you're saying the same thing that Megan Ramos will say, if you're going to Thanksgiving dinner, you fill up on the, the meat and, and the vegetables, those kind of things, don't fill right. up on the garbage first, right. because then you'll be full and you don't eat as much of the terrible foods, right? right. So in your case, it's, it's magnified, right. because you can't absorb, you don't have the, the area right. for that, yeah? Right. So, and then, and then you were telling me about the, the dumping system uh, syndrome and all that, How, did, did going to a meat diet help that? Did it make a, does it make a difference for you? It does because the dumping comes when you mix fat and sugar together mm -hmm. and your body can't handle that and so it will just dump it out. So I've, I've not had any dumping with meat or even low carb when I do a low glycemic vegetable. Mm -hmm. I don't have any of those problems. Wow. So yeah. Yeah, that's news to me. I never really, I've never really talked to anyone. About even, that. even the ice cream that we make now, I can do well because I don't use sugar in it. I'll use like monk fruit or something, and I don't get the dumping with it. And so I don't have any of those issues. And, and dumping is horrible. You, you sweat, you feel like you're gonna die, and everything goes through you quickly. And I don't get any of that anymore. Absolutely none of it. So Lisa, what would you tell someone who's uh, thinking about doing a gastric bypass or banding or something like that? What, what advice would you say? What would, you, what would your advice be? My advice is pretty simple. Don't do it until you've tried a ketogenic diet. Um, I think the benefits outweigh the problems that come later on. And they're finding more and more problems with gastric bypass. And so um, I really, I, I am firmly against a gastric bypass unless it's the absolute last resort. And you know what we're finding is 
it's a tough battle in, in the low-carb community because we feel like it's us against them. There's times where we can work with the surgeon if you decide to have banding, where we can say, look, let's get you on a ketogenic diet for three months before mm -hmm. and see how you do after surgery. Right. From the mental standpoint, from the physical standpoint, from the, the inflammation of the brain, inflammation of the joints, and have a plan afterwards. It's not right. like you're gonna get a surgery and you're fixed all of a sudden. So mm -hmm. I think that's a critical role and mm -hmm. a certain percentage of people are gonna end up not getting surgery because they're right. gonna see that benefit. Right. But there's, it's such a complicated area with regard to mental illness, depression, anxiety, yes. stress. I mean, it's a it's a complicated right. problem. So, you know, we, we just spoke with Ron Riggs and, and he's talking about that. He's working with surgeons and helping them to, you know, he says a lot of the patients, once they're doing well, once they have control over this out of control eating and they're not starving all day and they right. feel uh, satiety. Because we talk about calories and it's really about satiety because if you're right. not hungry, right, you you're not eat eating. No. So, you know, I mean, people here think it's funny when they say, you're skipping lunch, what's gonna happen? I was like, yeah. I have body fat to burn, I'm not, I'm not confused. Right. Maybe I'm a little confused. <laughs> but no, it's really critical and, and, and I think a lot of people think when they're going into a surgery, and you may have had this mindset, it's like, okay, once I get this done, my life's gonna be perfect and everything's gonna be great and I'll be that thin person. And, and, and we realize it's not the truth. And I think that's why the suicide rate goes up and the divorce rate and all those things are, are it's a critical thing that no one talks about really. Nobody talks about it and life still goes on. You still have those stressors no matter whether you've had the gastric bypass or you're doing keto or anything. You have to learn how to deal with that. Um, Gastric bypass can be a tool, I think, but I think if you learn how to deal with everything, the eating comes along with that, right? So if you learn how to handle stress, you're not gonna reach for that cookie. You're not gonna reach for the diet, not even the Diet Coke, but the Coke, or the Mountain Dew, or whatever you reach for, right? Yeah. And so I think it's imperative. Nowadays, it's gotten a lot better. There's a lot more support with a gastric bypass than I had when I went through it. But I still think that if you can get control of a lot of those things, you won't need the gastric bypass because keto and low carb helps you get there. And in the long run, it still is about what's going on in here yeah, that's critical. I mean, you, you raised so many great points. I'm glad we got to talk because yeah. I think a lot of people need to hear what you're saying and to step back and reevaluate because, again, it's a, it's a long road. Right. Um, but a lot of people who are choosing the other route are doing better. And we're seeing the, right. the outcomes being better. And, right. You know, Rob Zivis is a gastric bypass surgeon that was morbidly obese and lost 100 pounds. Right. But guess what? He gained back 30 pounds three different times because of the addiction qualities of food. Absolutely. And until we come to that understanding we're always going to struggle we are you know we that, are. that's the hard part is that yeah. people don't understand there's physiology there it's not that this person's lazy and weak and they don't exercise enough and they just eat too much right. but w when we start looking at that whole put the puzzle together for you we could have done that right yeah. and it's hard because you weren't really given that option i wasn't given the option yeah the only options were the drugs or the liquid diets which it's obvious everybody gains those back yeah, I have yet to see a person maintain weight loss in 17 years of being a doctor, not one time. Friends, family, anyone, may, and I'm sure it happens, right. but I've never personally seen it one time. Well, right. even with a gastric bypass, over 50% of the patients gain their weight back. So it is not a fail safe. If you have this surgery, you are going to stay thin for the rest of your life. It's not. And so there, there needs to be a more nutritional, I think, and before you go in and have it. I think it, like I, my personal opinion is it's the last option on the board, the last option. Um, had I had these options back 20 years ago, like I said, I probably wouldn't have done the gastric bypass. And I think it would have been better for me mentally and obviously physically. Um, to kind of have that, I wanna help other gastric bypass patients know that there's another option out there because a lot of doctors don't even think that there's another option. They just automatically go to the gastric bypass. And so there's a lot of overweight, obese people that either suffer because they don't wanna go under the knife or they go under the knife and they have all the problems that I've had. And there are a lot that don't, but they don't know what might be going on inside either. Yeah, and up here, right, right. everywhere. And, and so, Lisa, how do people get in touch with you if you want to help? Is there a way that you do that, or, or do you have a calling of what you're yeah, doing? Um, and you have I, a book also that's coming I'm, out. I'm you're writing on. my book, There's No Easy Way Out. 
Um, and you can get a hold of me at Lisa at um, JustWeighingIn.com. All right, cool. Because you know, I think this is, and it's funny because when you started telling me about that you're writing a book, and I said, well, people think it's an easy way out, and you said that's the name of my book. Yeah. It's amazing because I think that's people have that mindset that they do. again, even other people say, oh, they cheated, they didn't really lose it, but after what you went through. You sacrifice a lot. Yeah. So I think it's important that people understand that, and uh, you know, and yeah. I think hearing the conferences here at Low Carb Denver, you know, we're seeing so much work is being done, and we're we're seeing um, great studies that are yes. being done, clinical studies. I, I'm, I'm presenting a, a, a talk tomorrow, and it's about ben, what Ben Bakeman is doing in Utah, like having diabetics lifestyle only, yes. reversing their disease process yes. within 90 days. And, that's, and it's incredible, without drugs. That's why I come to these conferences, because I want to understand what's out there for other people like me. Because a lot of us, I'm a layman, I don't have a medical degree, um, so I didn't know what was out there till I went and advocated for myself. Yes. I need to find out for myself what's out there. And so if more people like me would do that for themselves, then they might have a different outcome. Yeah, and that would be my advice also in closing is saying, you have low carb down under, you have all these resources, you have diet doctor, you have you know, uh, tons of uh, people out there who wanna help, and I think the big thing is, is taking that step. You know, Jason Fung has excellent books and YouTube videos, you could do it for free, our podcast is free, you can just come listen to it, yeah. and we have all these experts on. So yes. I think when you start uh, it, when you in, have the initiative of doing it, and it's hard because so many people have just given up and they said, that's it, I'll never, I'll never lose weight, it can't happen. Yeah. They're not getting support from their doctor, they're not getting support from their family, and it's brutal. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, Troll Collision, my partner on the podcast has, a, he, they monitor patients closely, and basically 99% of the time, failure uh, is because of lack of family support and life stress. Sure. Yep. And so you look at that, 99% of the time, that's why you're gonna fail. Yes. So, and we have data on that now yeah. with binge eating disorder and all these things that we all struggle with. Right. And so, you know, what I, my advice would be in closing is seek the help. You, the fact you're watching these videos means you're, you're seeking help. So, yeah. so take those steps and do what you have to do and invest in yourself and, and learn. You know, that, that's critical. When I have a patient who does that, extremely successful, yes. you know? And some people say, just give me a meal plan, I don't wanna know the science. But you have to understand the science in order to be successful, and I think yep. that's critical. And, yep. and But thank you for sharing your thank story you. and your journey and your, your bravery in this. Yes. It's, it's, really, um, it's really gonna reach people. Well, I hope so, because that's what I wanna do. I wanna help people. You are already. Yeah.